Hello mate, welcome back. In this video, we're going to carry on adding our items to our environment. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. That really helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So what we've got here is our game loop, which is relevant to us right now, because what we need to do now is start adding some of these labels, which we are looking for. Now we've just added a whole bunch of items to our game environment, but if we click on them currently nothing happens. So what we need to do is we need to add the labels basically. So what we're going to do in, in our file explorer here, we've got a events here. What we're going to do is we're going to add a new folder and we're going to call this clickables and then underscore repeats. And the reason we're calling it that is because this is where we're going to put our default labels. So for me, because I've got the waiting room, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. I'm not going to call it waiting underscore room and then dot RPY. We hit enter and then we end up with a blank label. So what we can do now is go back to our variable defines where we created our first item and we can double click on that and control C. Come back to our waiting room and we're going to just type in label control V and then we're going to add underscore blank. I'm just going to hit return there for the second just so we don't forget to do it but we're going to come back to our script file and find out why what we're doing at the moment is we're creating the default label that's going to run when we click on those items so it's this one is just a simple blank or it can be a notification that just pops some text up on the screen to say that you've to acknowledge that you've clicked on the item if we want a specific item to do a specific action in a specific part of our game, i.e. chapter and sequence, then obviously we would add the chapter number and the sequence number to the end of the label. But these are the default ones, so we're going to add dot blank to or underscore blank to the end of all these labels. So that's what we've got here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set the notification variable. If you remember what that is, let's just... Let's remember if I can be a notification, that's how we spell it, equals true. And if you remember, we're in our screens file. If we were to go back to our screens, bear with me while I remember where the heck I put it. I think it's actually in there, their screens. And if we look for our say screen, which should be somewhere around about, that's the input screen, that's the choice screen. Have I just gone straight past it? Did I go? Yes, there we did. If you'll notice, we said, if notification, use main UI. And the reason we've done that is because if we just want some text to pop up on the screen, we don't want all of our UI, including the background image, to disappear. We want it to stay there. And in our main UI screen, what we have done, if we come up there, if notification, it adds the overlay, so we can't actually click on anything until we remove the text so we come back to our waiting room thing here and we can just simply say uh, we can add a bit of text it can be nobody needs to be saying it in particular we can just say this couch looks really comfy and then we can save that now what we have to do is we have to repeat that process for every item that we've added in our variables so the next one is going to be the waiting room door which is surgery door number one so we come back here you can go label, I'll go V underscore blank. If you remember, we have to do that. And then we can just, let's just copy and paste the remainder of this text so that we don't have to keep retyping. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to change on that. And then we can say this surgery is currently occupied. Something along those lines. And then we can come back to our variable defines and we're going to find door number two, control C that one. And we're going to add another label, control V underscore blank. And then we're going to just paste the rest of this text into here. This surgery is also currently occupied. Next one is going to be door number three. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to go back into my waiting room. In fact, I'm not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one to nav now then 
this is where things get interesting. We can come back to our script file. So what happens when we click on the button and it returns the nav click type? It looks for all of the locations and it's going to match q.name, so the first value in the button, and q.unlocked. If we, if we, basically what we're going to do is we're going to change the name value of this one to, and let's just create a location. It's going to be a fake location. It's not going to lead anywhere, but we can call this surgery underscore. In fact, no, do you know what? We're going to change this to seating area because I do believe if I quickly bring up my folder of backgrounds, which is on my other screen just talk amongst yourselves for a moment just going to quickly check because it's entirely possible that i have another location to visit which doesn't have any images in it seating area yeah that's what we've got so we've now we've named this 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 item seating area so what the script file is going to do when we see nav it's going to look for if ui return equals equals q name and q unlocked then we can go to old location. So now we need to come back into our variable pines and where we've got locations, we need to control C and control V and we need to add one. And this is going to be called seating underscore area. And then we can just call it the, the nice name of outdoor relaxation zone, you know, give it a really pretentious name. It is accessible, but what we want is we don't want it to be uh, have a map icon come back to our classes file where we have given our locations their properties somewhere in this file there you go so unlocked map is the last value so we are going to go back to here and the last value is going to be false so the location is unlocked but it's not got a map icon so the only way to get to it is by visiting the location which we actually need to create as well so we're going to change that to there um, didn't do that right did I need to paste that there this one's going to be waiting underscore room and the only reason we're doing that is because if we need to if we go into our waiting room and then we want to go back the back button won't work unless this location actually exists because it's checking for it so what we need to do is just change this to a surgery waiting room and this one as a map icon even though we don't currently have a map icon for it so we could actually just say false for this for now until we create one let's just say that that's fine so we've now added these two locations and we've populated the waiting area with all of these buttons and this door door number three will actually take us to the seating area so we don't actually need to create a label for this one because it doesn't need one so we can go straight to the picture control c that value and at the end of here we go to label and then blank that one and then we can copy all of this text again and then paste it there now if we wanted this to move the scene on one we could simply add on a hash next there but obviously this is the default one so we don't want that to happen also if we wanted this to show us a different image without the text on the screen or if it wanted to start a sequence we just remove notification equals true from it and then we just say show the image and then do whatever else we want to do so this is just a demonstration of what happens when we add this style of label to our scene so this is the picture so we can say this is a nice picture control save that one and then we can move on. So our next one is going to be waiting room picture two, control C. In fact, well, let's just make this life, our life a bit easier here. We're going to control C, control V. We know we've got three pictures and we don't necessarily really need it to do anything different when we click on them. So we just can change that number to 012. This is also a nice picture. This is a really nice picture. There we go. The text is slightly different. Now back to our defines and we've got the trash cans. Control C that one. And then we'll just go label, control V, blank, like that. And then we can copy this text again. Paste that in there. And then this trash can is smelly. 
Now we know we've got another trash can, so we can copy and paste that one as well. This trash can is called trash can two. This trash can is slightly less smelly. There we go. And just to clarify, the reason we're doing this is that we want our game universe, our game world to feel like it's alive. You want to be able to interact with things and for it to return something interesting to you so that you as the player feel like there's more than just the main storyline to follow along. You can even have subplots or little additional storylines running parallel with the main storyline by just adding interesting things to these items that you can click on. So we've done the trash cans, now we've got the vending machine. Add that one as well. Label vending machine underscore blank. And then we can just copy and paste this again. Add that one in there, and then this is a vending machine. So we can just say, yeah, uh, potato chips, crisps, anyone? Next one we've got is going to be our water fountain. Control C that one. Label Control V water fountain blank. Now this might feel like it's long and laborious, but this is kind of game development. To be honest, there's a lot of this kind of stuff involved. If you can, if you want your game to feel like it's got more than just a few minor things going on, um, so the water fountain would just go yeah. Thirsty work, this gaming clock. And last but not least, we have the window. And we can go back to our waiting room and now we can say label underscore blank. And then I'll just copy and paste this. Get rid of that. Control V, and then we can just add some text here says there's a handwritten sign here that says don't jump cool beans right so this is our default we are currently in our sequence number is going to be uh, one and um, one zero so what we can now also do is in one zero, we can actually add one of these items in here. So let's say waiting room door number two has something that happens in this event, in this scene, in this sequence and chapter that behaves slightly differently. So we're going to just change this to say one underscore zero like that. And then we're going to have This door is actually really cool. And then what we can have it do is say next, like so. And we'll experiment and we'll find out what happens with our sequence and chapter as we click on that one. So that's that done. Now we can run our code and we can find out exactly what's going on. So here we are in our game code. So we'll, let's just test and see what happens if we click on the couch. This couch looks really comfy. You can see we've still got our items up here. And then when we click off, we can click on something else and it says potato chips, crisps. Now, if you remember surgery door number three, if we click on it, takes us to another location. This location doesn't currently have any buttons in it because I haven't added them. But if I click on the back button, it will bring us back to where we were. So the nav button we know works. Now, if we were to click on surgery door number two, if you remember, we said that this is the one that interacts when we click on it with something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in shift O. I'm going to say print uh, chapter one print sequence one one. OK, interesting. <laughs> this may not work then because the label I created was uh, for sequence for chapter one sequence zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say sequence equals zero print sequence zero All right now we know that this is going to work so we've got surgery door number two this door is actually really cool now if we click off that one we go back to our console and we say print sequence now you can see it's moved the game on by one 
in the sequence. And that's all there is to that. So you can go ahead and you can add as many of these as you like. You can add these labels until your heart's content. Keep adding items by chopping up your scenes like we did in the previous video. And then in the next video, we will look at changing some more stuff. Thanks very much for watching this one, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.